Good morning, Chickadoes and Chickadees. Today is Thursday, October 22nd, and this is your lecture video for the Tolman model. All right, so as we get into this style of writing, the argumentative essay, remember it is a essay in which you are now the communicator. You are driving the, the conversation. You are trying to convince your audience, in this case being me, that you are right. Whatever position you're taking in this particular argument, you are, you are the Abigail Adams. You are the President Bush. You are um, um, the communicator of this particular idea. So whatever prompt you are given, you're going to have to pick a side. You're going to have to argue your case. But we are so used to a certain style of writing that it is not usable for this argumentative essay. We have to have a more sophisticated approach when it comes to writing our argument. And I'll cover those th three different styles in just a little bit. But the model that I love most is the Tolman model, very similar to the Schaefer model that some of y'all are used to in writing. When you look at the body paragraph, such as the structure I've been teaching you, T, topics and its evidence analysis. The Schaefer model includes another piece of evidence to support your idea to prove, okay, not in just this particular case, but also in this case as well. That's what I love about the Tolman model. It kind of follows that approach. When we look at the Tolman model, and I'm gonna include a document of the actual structure, it works more in the debate circle when you're up there presenting that information, that organization of that idea, the presentation of the information. It works for debate, but not for us in writing. But I do like the concept of the Tolman model, which is what we are going to adopt, but modify it, change it for our writing needs when it comes to the AP language, language of composition essay, the free response question number three, argumentative essay. Okay. So it is Tolman, it's just a tweaked version of it, and it's also in reminiscent of the Schaefer model that you're used to. So our T structure is our basic version. That's our basic standard paragraph. That's always going to be our winner. Schaefer is a more sophisticated, but really all you're doing is just adding extra evidence. And the Tolman model does that and one more. So when we take a look at Tolman, it follows this organization of you make a clown, a claim, you make a claim, you give grounds for your ideas, you give a rationale of why this is an example of where the, what it looks like, looks like. Your warrant is your explanation of this concept, the explanation of that ground, which is your evidence. The backing is looking of elsewhere and finding information that proves that you're also right. And then the rebuttal is arguing against your opponent. Okay. So when you are in a debate and you focus on this kind of presentation, this organization works. But for us in a writing situation, we have to adapt it to what we need it to be. So the claim in our language is your reason. It's your topic sentence. It's the reason that you're taking this position. If you're saying we should have uh, half days here at school, freshmen should be allowed to go off campus for lunch, um, we need to close schools, open them back up, uh, Chick-fil-A or Popeyes, whatever the case is, whatever position that you're taking in that, in that argument, your claim is your reason. It is your topic sentence. So whenever you open up your body paragraph, you have to make sure that opening sentence is the reason why your position is correct. It is the reason you are taking that stance on that situation or on that argument. So that opening sentence needs to be clear about why. Why are you right? The grounds is our evidence. It's our proof. It's our facts. It's that information. And again, it's that specificity. It is that specific situation, that specific person that went through this. It is that example about why uh, of what your reason looks like. So this is why I want you to know your four corners of knowledge, because you can pull that information from your personal life, from a movie or book that you have read or seen, from something that's going on in the world right now, or something that happened in the past, but stay away from cliches. So your grounds is your proof. It is your evidence. It's your example in real life of what your reason looks like. So whatever your reason be, show me what it looks like. Give me an example. That is our grounds or our evidence.
the warrant is you just explaining to me why you're right. If this is your reason for this position, if this is your evidence to show me what it looks like, then why? How are you right? Get me to your side. Support yourself. Tell me how this reason and evidence proves you're right. That the position you're taking on Chick-fil-A or Popeye's, half days or full days, open campus, closed campus for lunch, totally up to you. But it's a conversation that we have been talking about. It's that analysis. The backing when it comes to Tolman, just like in Schaefer's structure, it's now your second evidence. It's like, okay, it, it happened in this case, but then there's also this other situation, this other person, this other personal moment, something else that's happening across the world right now or happened in the past. Here's just our second evidence to prove that we're still right, that we still got it. You still need to side with me. And then you'll be still explaining. It's kind of like a second warrant. You're ex explaining how the second evidence is also correct. Now, this is what separates Tolman from everything else, from our T structure basic paragraph to our Schaefer paragraph, which is a little more sophisticated, but really just has a second piece of evidence. What makes it Tolman and what makes this argumentative is the, the rebuttal. This is where you get to acknowledge the other side. Because really, when it comes to argumentative essays or argumentative appeals or discussions, it's that sense of sophistication, that sense of open-mindedness, that you are not narrow-minded and only focused on your ideas and what you have to say. You are acknowledging the other side. You know that the opposition in different varieties exists in different facets, and you deal with them. You talk about it, and there's different approaches to, do, to doing that. The rebuttal makes it sophisticated. It makes you seem grown. It makes you seem mature. Think of it this way. You ask mom and dad to go out for the weekend and they tell you no. Okay, you get pissed, you get upset, you go, all, you go on a rant. But what if you approached it this way? You acknowledge what they have to say. I understand where you're coming from. I know you, you're scared for me. I know you fear that something's gonna, that's bad happened to me. But you know what? You raised me right. I know what to do in a situation. I know I can always call you if I need help. I know I can always call the, the police if something goes, uh, goes wrong. I understand your fear, but you have raised me right. Please let me show you, prove to you that I can handle this, that I can be trusted, that I can be held accountable, that I am responsible and mature enough to be a little bit more grown up and have a little bit more freedom. What? They'll probably look at you like, who are you? You aged 10 years in that one second. It's an idea of sophistication. It is that ability to acknowledge that the opposition exists and been able to deal with them. So that rebuttal is what makes it Tolman, is that acknowledging the other side when it comes to our argumentative essays, that this paragraph is going to be long. And that's okay, because it's a conversation. It shows depth, insight, uh, being provocative, insightful. So we want that. We want that. So your reason, evidence, explain why you're right. Second piece of evidence, explain why you're right. Acknowledge the other side might, might have to say, in this idea or for this reason that you're giving and talk about it. The normal styles of argumentation or when we're dealing with taking positions on a particular topic, these are the three basic. There's more, but these are the ones we always gravitate to. Nestorian, concession, and strawman. The historian is one of the weaker forms of argumentation because the style is so one-sided. You only focus on your ideas. These are the style of essays that you have been writing since elementary school, even also last year as a sophomore um, for your persuasive essay for STAR. You have a position, you give your three reasons why you're right, and then you're done. You just argue your side. You don't acknowledge the other side. The other side does not exist. You have horse blinders on. So it's a strong structure, but it's weak when it comes to the level of sophistication and maturity. So that's what we're moving away from. We're adding that element of rebuttal, that, uh, that element of acknowledging and talking about the other side. And so the story is our basic, and we're extending on it. Concession is not like the food, not the concession stand, but to con 
to have a concession is to agree with the other side. I see where you're coming from. This is probably the, the model for customer service. When you're listening to the customer have a complaint, you're like, okay, I understand that you are uh, upset. I, I, I hear that you were, you're upset about the wait time. I, I, I know that it's a wait time. I understand you. Would you like a free ticket? Would you like a free meal for next time? Can I add on a large tea for you? To consensus, concession is to agree with your opponent to say, yeah, you're right. That, that is an issue. That is a concern. But this is why I'm more so right. This is why my argument is stronger. This is why you should side with me regardless. Okay. So the concession shows that sense of maturity. It shows that sense of being able to see where the other side is coming from, agree with them on a level, but then also say, no, I get you, but this is why you should not be concerned about that. Here's my information to back myself up. Strawman is going to be one of your weakest styles of dealing with your opposition. It is a, a fallacy. It is a wrong way of thinking. Think of a scarecrow. That's where kind of the idea comes from. The scarecrow is a prop that's made to uh, scare off birds. It's meant to be um, big and scary and ominous and just something that you don't want to approach. But really, it's just a bunch of clothes stuck up on a pole stuffed with straw. It's not really a big deal. This is the basis of the Strawman approach, is where you take a minor, minuscule flaw in your opposition's argument and blow it up. You make it a big deal. You make it the end all be all of the argument. This is the kind of style that we see with political ads. I remember a couple of years ago, we had a district attorney running in San Antonio. And when I was teaching this, it was a prime example of that. And what he was right. He was running for office, running for district attorney, and the opposition came out with political ads about how this man could not be trusted. He was someone that was vile, cruel, and a criminal. He had a, a, an arrest and should not be placed in charge of the criminal system. The arrest that they were referring to was back when he was in his late teens, early 20s, and this man was probably in his 40s, late 30s, 40s at that time. They were pinning one particular instance of when he was a young, a young, you know, teenager, a young adult, and making it the end all be all of his, his whole uh, legal career. And we see that with Senate positions, Congress positions, presidential positions. Like we see someone taking one small element and blowing it all up in your face. That's probably the drama that y'all are facing day to day in your high school lives. So Strawman is not the best approach, but I do want you to see that it exists so that you can point it out when others are doing it and show them how it's the wrong approach to do. So with concessions, we can go two ways agree and show why you're right or agree and show why the opposition is wrong what they're saying is wrong but in a polite respectful manner we don't need to get nasty about it strawman it gets nasty it gets cruel it is mean and there's really nothing to stand on because you're taking a very minor issue and blowing it all up the historian is very blind is very blinded it's one-sided it's only you and only you and that's not a sophisticated argument. Think about arguments you got into with people, family, friends, and they never want to see your side. It's only their side that's right because they said so. Frustrating, irritating, aggravating. So be the sophisticated person. Be the one who's open to the other side, but then also have the argument to prove why they're wrong or prove why you are more so in the right than they are. So when you write your paragraph tomorrow, because that's what your focus is going to be, you're going to focus on this Tolman paragraph. Introduction, like you saw in the previous video, introduction with thesis statement. But the body paragraph, I want you to take a shot at Tolman. Take one reason, give evidence, explain why you're right. Another piece of evidence, explain why you're right. And then acknowledge the other side and deal with the other side, how you see best and most respectful and in a sophisticated manner. I'll give you more instruction about that tomorrow. But know that Tolman is like our tea. 
That's a build on on our shaker, which is a build on and is an add on of the rebuttal of acknowledging the other side and talking about them or to them in hopes of promoting your cause, your position and winning your case. All right. I love you. Have a good day and make good choices. Bye guys.